first saw this idea kind of prototyped about two years ago, and I am pumped to see it finally making landfall. Everybody, Josh the RV Nerd at Vicious RV, and I am excited to showcase this one for you here um, because the Wildwood FSX division, their single axle little campers, when you get their platinum package, they have cranked it up a notch, adding that full candy coated nose cap with that awesome windshield, and with this model having that full wraparound front U dinette. It's, it's like, to me, it's a perfect fit because I think windshields look awesome on RVs, but a lot of times they're buried up in a bedroom, and I don't know that they provide a lot of benefit. This setup makes this little camper look and feel not so little whatsoever. To me, it works really, really well, and I really like what they've done here. This is also really interesting in that it is a simple, easy, no slide, small and light camper with a private rear bedroom. And that is like incredibly hard to find. Um, it is a seven and a half wide RV, which would be a really nice fit if you're like gonna be SUV towing or like mid-size pickup towing or anything like that. And if you got like a half ton or bigger, you're gonna yank it all over the place. Now when I say SUV, I do mean bigger tow package class, not the small little stuff. And this is not gonna be a layout for everyone, but you know, you gotta remember for the size that it is, I can't think of anything that they really could have um, cranked up a little bit harder on this. Like the underbelly is enclosed with their accessibility package. Uh, there's the optional 200 watt solar Solar package you can get on the roof it has a side mount solar plug it comes with its own little griddle outside so if you want to keep some of the cooking heat and smells out of it you can the bathroom's a walk-through bathroom but they've even improved that from the original generation with sliding doors now instead of swinging doors so you don't got a butt scoop boogie all over around in the camper it's just simpler and easier makes more sense and so you don't cut the camper off there is at least a privacy curtain there if someone is using the bathroom you can still slide by them but you know its greatest asset will be its greatest liability truly but I think this is, it's a very unique floor plan. I haven't seen anyone else that builds this. I'm really curious to know what you think about this one. If you like how we get you the footage, hit that subscribe button. Let's go. Now, one of the things I like to do with RVs sometimes, uh, like I, I think I definitely fall into this habit. When I'm standing around with a camera, you tend to run the camera where you can walk in the RV. But the fact is, a lot of times when you're using this RV, you're going to be sitting in a chair you're going to be laying in the bed you're going to be sitting on the toilet so i like to give you a couple little views sometimes from what i call the driver's seat view and that's what we're doing right here i'm sitting on the the front u dinette bench right uh as you walk in the door and this is what you're looking at and by putting that windshield on the front here it is crazy how much it has opened up this little rig and it just looks and feels so much bigger than it used to. It's actually really, really nice. And aesthetically, I think it looks really nice. And there is a privacy shade built into that that we're going to see. Now, the last couple of years, what they had is one of those um, bracketed table style legs that if you leaned on it um, the wrong way, which frankly didn't take much, you'd rip the four screws out of the paneling and then it'd fall on the floor and it was worthless. And you'd be like, this camper is a piece of junk. Well, they thought that sucked just like we thought it sucked. So they did something about it and I commend them for that. And they went with this very robust, um, I don't, it's not a true lagoon table, but it's obviously that sort of style where it, it, it can twist and shout and do just about anything you need it to. And I think already you've seen a couple samples, you get the idea. Now, in case you're curious, this can fold down into a sleeper. The RV is seven and a half foot wide from exterior sidewall to sidewall. Interior, you're going to lose about three to four inches of that. So you, you still have like over a seven foot long sleeping space here. So this is basically either a solo or couples camper, but like, if you've got a big dog, if you've got like a grandkid or something like that, like there's opportunities here. This could be a, uh, you know, a two person buddy camper. Uh, the thing is too, this rear bench is really, really wide. So a thought, if you don't want to have to take the whole table apart is just take those back cushions off, throw a pillow down, grab a blanket, and you've got a one person sleeper very easily right there. I don't even know that you really need to fold the table down into a sleeper. Another thing you could do, you see that little silver latch on the black uh, bracket down there? 
you can just take the table out. If you want to open the space up further and have an open lounge in a no-slide camper, you could do that too. Now, this is easy cleaning, uh, pet-friendly, no floor vents or anything like that. So there's some handy little doodad features in that regard. And before I get too far along and turn around, one other thing I want to mention. When they first came out with these um, private bedroom single-axle FSX floor plans, they did not have centralized air. They have since uh, uh, changed things over. So they are ducting air back into the private bathroom and especially the private rear bedroom, which has two wall partitions between it and the air conditioner. Now, uh, one of the other things you can do if you really want to make it ice cold up in here is you can open this little thing and um, drop all your cold, well, about 70% of your cold air right here. Then at night, close that down and shunt the air back to your bedroom if you want to. It, it works. It works very, very well. Now, uh, working our way forward, I don't exactly have a plan of attack here because this is a uh, very irregular, uncommon kind of camper. I do want to point out a couple cool little details, though. Like over here in the entry door, you do have a, uh, a privacy shade built right in. That is part of the Platinum Bag. You see Mr. Carlos out there. Carlos is a member of our Anderson, Indiana team. I got a, the pleasure of meeting him yesterday. He's new with our team at the time of this filming, but... Nice guy. Good head on his shoulders. It was a pleasure working with him. If you get the solar package, your uh, charge controller is located up here, which I personally think is a good location for it. And they did put their switches all the way up here, but the RV is only six and a half foot tall, floor to ceiling. Most people are going to be able to reach that just fine. I could see it being a bit of a challenge for someone who's a little more, well, gravity friendly, as it were. I'll give you a little bit of look at this, but I, FSX has been ahead of the curve on so many things for years. That is a portable Bluetooth speaker, but it has its own built-in charging mount right in the RV that also doubles as USB charging plugs. And that goes hand in hand very nicely with the household plugs that you have right there. I think it's a, a really, really smart combination of features. Now, something I probably should have done is given you a little bit better look at the uh, kitchen. So let me see if I can get myself situated and rearranged here. And once again, there's there's no one way that you have to use that table. You can rearrange it any way that you please. Something I thought was actually really nice is that stovetop vent hood. It does exhaust outside, right? Uh, and getting the smells and the heat from cooking out of the RV, that's not something a lot of little campers do. And every one of those drawer fronts that you're looking at is an actual drawer. Again, that's something that little camper... You're lucky if a lot of little campers give you a single drawer. I think this is one of the best compact kitchen designs I may have ever seen. And you're getting it here in this little RV. I think that they've absolutely knocked that out very, very well. Now, that is one of those larger, um, nearly 11 cubic foot, 12 volt compressor fridges. And I have some good news for you on that. They're making them, uh, this is that variety where the door could open either way. And what we are looking at here is not actually the fridge that they'll be using moving forward. This is the fridge that they were using for a little bit. Let me explain. So pardon the blinding glare off my forehead right here. Thankfully, there's not a mirror around creating a feedback loop, which uh, punches a hole through space time. It's a whole different thing. You divide by zero. Never mind. So this refrigerator, it is kind of cool. Um, it's less useful maybe in this floor plan that it can open from either direction, I guess. You could actually reach around the corner and grab some shower beers, depending on what you're looking for. <laughs> some shower ice cream. <laughs> anyway, but let's say you left one side open, but you didn't get it totally closed, and then you open the other side. See, this one's kind of fighting me on it, but um, some of these, if you're not careful, I'm, I'm actually glad this one's not failing. Even though it's screwing up my demonstration, I'm glad it's not failing. If you're not careful, some of these bi-directional fridge doors, you could pull the whole door off, hit yourself in the head, drop it on your foot, gouge up your flooring, whatever. They're changing to a different fridge that just completely solves for that. I did manage to pull this fridge face off earlier. It's not working right now. I'm glad it's not doing that right now, but they're going to one that just doesn't do it, which I like even better. So good news. Because the number one thing everybody likes is getting stitches um, on their camping trip. As though they were snitches, because everyone knows that snitches get stitches. Neither here nor there. Um, let's take a look at this. One of the, uh, the things here, when you start getting these big windshields, I wonder about privacy and I wonder about sun protection. Well, it's kind of cool, is you do have uh, blackout well, privacy pleated shades. Not a full-on blackout like roller shade. I kind of phrased that improperly. They are pleated shades that are black in color, which will do a great job. And the windows are tinted, 
So if you do need to keep the sun out, if you do need privacy, you do have the capacity for all of that. And as you can see, this little kitchen has shockingly good storage. It has way better storage than it has any business having, frankly. Um, I, I do, I, I wonder, do you like the circular round sink that they have? Because it's a very small, very space efficient sink. Or would you prefer something more in the way of a rectangular sink or a farm sink? Usually folks tell me that they don't prefer the round ones, and I'd like to get as much of that feedback back to the factory as possible. But it's not to say, if you like the round one, leave me a note. Let me know you like the round one. Um, again, they're using uh, sliding privacy doors for that bathroom so that it is easier to pass through. You don't have to walk forward, back, forward, back to, you know, uh, do the Konami code uh, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, every time you want to go in and out of the bathroom or your bedroom. And if you don't want to cut the camper in half while someone's using the bathroom, you do have that privacy curtain there. But um, you also have pretty decent room around that toilet. Now, I've got that curtain tucked out of the way as I'm doing my little toilet selfie demo right here. Like, you're looking at it like, I don't know, that curtain's behind the toilet. Well, normally it's not. That's just where I have it tucked to get it out of the way currently. Um, that box down there that you're looking at, that is actually the wheel well. And I think what I would do with that is I'd stack some extra rolls of toilet paper or something right there. To me, that seems like a good spot to do that. You know what I mean? Um, it's not a big camper, but they did give us decent uh, counter space for no bigger than it is. And I like how we do have an actual medicine cabinet over here. It's not just a mirror, mirror glued against the wall. And you've got the windows open to keep on a conversation with the neighbors. What's a little tricky here, because of where the roof trusses Fall, and, I, and I verified this. Last year I was guessing and I later verified. Because of where the roof trusses fall, the rafters basically, they had to put the power vent and the skylight exactly where they're at because they can't fit anywhere else. I would prefer the skylight be turned 90 degrees so that it, it overlapped with the shower more, but it's not possible to do that. However, if you notice, I can stand in that shower. Now my head's definitely up in the skylight. I'm getting a scalp massage when I do it. I can wash my hair and the roof at the same time. <laughs> but you get the idea. Um, a, I, I can fit in that. Now, it's a small, single axle, little camper. And the fact is, though, they give a shower surround paneling. We do have the skylight up there. If I have to, I can stand in it. I'm in the shower for a few minutes. I'm in the rest of the RV for a while. I can make it work. You know, it's like Project Runway and Tim Gunn says, designers, make it work or something like that. I don't know. My Tim Gunn voice and my, my snooty falooty voice sound awfully similar. Yes. Uh, moving on. It's not the best Tim Gunn voice, to be fair. This bedroom. Let me slide in here, actually. Slip slide around. They went all in on the windows of this thing. The window coverage in this bedroom is absolutely amazing. Household and USB outlets on both sides of the bed with your handy little phone stands. Also, very nice touch. All these bedroom windows also open for airflow, which is excellent. Um, the, uh, the one thing I'm kind of curious about back here is, uh, is there an opportunity for a twin bed version of this floor plan? So what I want to mention, first of all, this is a short queen. Being a, I would rather it be a true queen. It's a short, small RV. You could probably physically fit a true queen into this room. However, you are definitely going to have to basically climb over it to get walked around it. To keep the RV shorter, lighter, smaller on a single axle, which is what FSX either makes toy haulers or single axles. That's what they do. The other Salem Wild Woods like that would become an x and They don't make this floor plan yet. Um, you know, they sometimes have more room that these just don't. But it's already a pretty heavy camper for a single axle. We're going to talk about more, more on that when we get outside. But I just want to be fair. But the fact is, you have a simple, easy, no-slide camper with a walk-around bedroom and full privacy. And that's just not stuff that single axle campers often do. The other thing here is kind of like the kitchen, although it's not giant. They did a decent job giving us storage. Starting down there, taking a look around, you do have, um, you know, hanging closets on both sides of the, uh, the the camper. You do have overhead storage above the bed also, although um, those don't have any sort of gas struts or anything. That is that is one, like, what, what would you think about the idea of a magnet holdback on the ceiling holding those doors open? I wonder if that's even possible on this camper. That could be maybe a neat idea. But there is easy lift storage below it. And you see those handy little um, removable kind of fabric tote kind of things. I think those are those little cubes are a really good smart thing. Because they're very easy to um, 
like, personally, you can use them as dresser space. You could take a couple of them out. You could maybe, like, people ask me all the time, where do I put my cat litter box? Maybe that's a spot you could do something like that. And a little trailer like this, making extra space accommodations for the four-legged furry friends can obviously be a tricky proposition, but it is what it is. Now, when I stand all the way back and look front, it does look like the front, like, hey, man, why didn't they put any cabinetry over here? But if you watch the curvature of that front end, you realize that's why there's not cabinetry above the window. Because there's just, it wouldn't be good functional space. You'd be bonking your head on it. What do you think? I think this floor plan really, really benefits from that table setup. But what do you guys think? And with no slides... It is perfect for what I call stealth mode camping, where you don't even have to unhook from your vehicle. You are always in road mode. Uh, you can you can park just about anywhere and hop back in your RV. You can sit down, use the dining, use the bathroom, bedroom, kitchen. Everything is fully functional and accessible because there's no slides in the way. So if you do need to make an overnight stop and you want to make yourself a sandwich or a bowl of ramen or something, sounds... No, did you know? <laughs> Sorry, tangent. Did you know you can actually starve to death eating nothing but ramen? You can die fat and starving because it has no actual nutritional value to it. Well, at least I'm talking about that nice, that like Maru Chan instant ramen chicken flavor stuff. You know, the one that we, that Americans think of when we think of ramen that isn't really the same. You, I've talked about this too much. Why do I do this? What is wrong with me? We got ourselves a little special guest. This is Mr. Ryan Connor. He's actually from our Lincoln, Nebraska store, hanging out here at our indie team. Just want to introduce you to another face here because we've got awesome people all over the place. And um, I've, I've only had the fortunate uh, time to get out there and hang out with my Midwestern brother and sisters uh, in Nebraska a few times. But it's kind of funny because they're like, so what's it like here versus where you're from? I'm like, let's see. Where I'm from, it's cow farms and cornfields. How does that sound? They're like, well, that sounds a lot like Nebraska. <laughs> Anyway, let's take a look at this thing here. You saw the weights and the measures. Again, I do think this is generally going to be a decent fit for a lot of, say, like mid-sized tow package pickups. And how good does this look in this updated Platinum package with that full nose cap? It doesn't even look like the same trailer it used to be. It looks like they launched a completely new thing. And actually, it was funny if you look at it. It's, um, I think the nose cap is actually modeled after the Harry Glens, the Heritage Glen and Hemisphere, Salem's and Wildwoods. That's exactly what it looks like to me. Now remember, it is a seven and a half wide single axle, so you are moving into a single propane tank on these. Despite that smexy look of the fiberglass, remember, at its heart, this is a more basic series of RV. Um, you know, it's not something that's, uh, it, it doesn't have the budget of a J Feather Micro or an Ember, for instance, and it doesn't have some of those features. But overall, pound for pound, it brings big value to what you do get. Platinum package obviously gives us that smexy fiberglass. What throws people off is it doesn't change the structure of the RV. It's still a stick-built camper. Um, the fiberglass is actually laminated to a, uh, a double uh, offset leaved Luan backer and then hung to the, the, the wood skeleton. Now, up front here, it kind of does. It kind of doesn't have a front pass-through. Like, you've got that nice storage area there. You can see how it fits that extra-large tote that we brought in with it. Um, but the uh, on the other side, there is that slide-out griddle. Now, that is standard on this floor plan. If you don't like it, that's always something that we could just, like, unscrew the slider mount and remove. It's not like it is absolutely stuck there. And if you notice, the lights are on inside. If you really, really look in there, you can kind of see that. What I will tell you is that if it is nighttime outside and it is daytime, uh, or it is lit up inside, <laughs> daytime inside, I'm an idiot. Yeah, that's a, that's a twist for the flux capacitor. Um, somebody might be able to see in it. Now, something just occurred in my head. I want to double check the cargo carrying capacity on this thing. Yeah, that's, I was, I'll just say, I was a little bit afraid of that. So. Um, when you get the platinum package and all the extra upgrades that go onto this, you are adding weight to it. Because usually when you think fiberglass, you think lighter weight. But this is what uh, I call a hybrid style of construction where it is fiberglass over a wood frame. And the, the catch-22 with that is actually the heaviest way to build a camper. So when you go with this package, you will reduce your cargo carry capacity um, to plus minus just around the neighborhood of about 600 pounds. And for some folks who carry water in their tanks, that could be an instant deal breaker. I hope you appreciate taking time to go out of the way to stop the show to point out something that may cause you not to buy this RV. That's a bummer, obviously, for us, but 
I want you to find your second camper the first time, and I don't want you to end up breaking it, overloading it, not having a positive experience. And this is one of those things I think you deserve to know before you go forking over a lot of hard-earned money. So if you like the layout and you needed a few hundred pounds lighter, perhaps, uh, look at the non-platinum package. Now, it won't look near as smexy as this, but um, hey, you know what? It's going to be a little bit lighter and it'll accomplish that goal. Up front here, again, you do have that uh, slide-out griddle. And again, that is just a standard part of this package. Naturally, down below it, you do have the gas grill cooker hooker. Now, the griddle has nothing to do with the platinum package. The griddle is just one of the things they do. And I'll give them credit. They put the biggest awning on this thing they could for this little camper. Um, normally, I kind of prefer the concept of an outside shower uh, over on the, well, the poop side of the camper, as it were. But it's not that it isn't without merits right here, because what it can let you do is like, you know, if you're in a sandy, dirty spot, you can kind of rinse your feet off or something before you go inside. That can actually be a pretty handy detail. Now, if you notice too, especially in that bedroom, for a little camper, it has surprisingly good window coverage. They do a nice job there. Now you can see how they've gone with that telescopic ladder uh, prep mount over there. So if you want to get one of those things, you can. I, that is not something that this brand had done in the past. And your feedback was really the impetus that uh, directed them to do that. Magnet holdbacks for your baggage doors are also a nice touch. And you will find that again on the standard or the platinum package. And you can fit an awful lot of junk inside that trunk. That is the storage that is actually under the bed area. And I don't know if you notice those struts, but that is an easy lift gas strut assisted bed. I don't think I demonstrated that when I was inside the camper and I may not have done you any favors. Now, obviously at this show display, it's kind of hard to see everything, but I do want to mention over here that you do have um, a, uh, a, a black tank flush as well as a tankless on-demand water heater. So if you need to take some back-to-back -back showers, no one's going to have to deal with uh, the, uh, the technical phrase is the chilly willy shower situation. And I probably should have said this sooner, but normally this is how this trailer would look like. It is available two ways. You have the standard um, Salem or Wildwood FSX, two names for the exact same product, or you can get it in the platinum package. That's when you get the fiberglass. That's when you get that sleek looking nose cap. It also adds a window into the entry door that isn't always necessarily there. It's more than just a fiberglass look package. There's, there's a couple other extra details, widgets and whiz bangs to it. Now, what I will do to help you is I'll leave you a link in the video description to check for pricing and availability. That one link will show you whether we have a Salem, a Wildwood, a Standard, or Platinum, and the price differences between them as they are individually shipped and specced out to individual stores so you can zero in on the most realistic price tag to help set the most realistic expectations. That's my goal here with these videos today. So when you're ready, we're ready. Until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.